Hi everyone and welcome back to the Android application development tutorials. Let's open up Android Studio. In this video tutorial I wanted to go over the structure of Android Studio, um, go through settings a little bit, take a quick look through there. Um, we're also going to be setting up a new virtual device and I'll kind of explain as I go. Um, first of all, the first time I opened up Android Studio I thought it was a little daunting uh, so it took me a little while to get used to it. So I wanted to quickly go over, I guess, the structure of Android Studio, point a few things out, that way you guys are a little bit more comfortable. The first thing I'd like to go over is the toolbar at the top. Android Studio's developers have already provided us with the essential buttons we'll need here. We've got the SDK Manager and the AVD Manager, as well as like our settings and our run. Um, however, if you feel like you want to customize this, you can right-click on this toolbar and click Customize. Uh, for example, you probably don't need the open or save buttons here. You can probably remove those with cut, um, paste, etc. Probably don't need those if you want a little bit less distraction. Feel free to edit those and uh, move those out of there. Uh, the next thing I want to go over is um, the navigation bar here. Now this probably looks familiar to you um, because it's the same thing you've been seeing just about your entire life. It's right at the top of the screen here. However, there's a little bit of a difference if you are to click on one of these. It'll actually give you all the subdirectories or subfiles that are in here. So it's kind of nice. A little advanced there. Over on the left side we have these guys. They're called tool buttons. So we'll have project structure, captures, um, nearing the bottom, build variants, and then favorites. Um, you can see these tool buttons go around the bottom of the screen and all the way up back up to the top on the side. Now what's really nice is the developers put in this little box here at the bottom. If you hover over it, it'll actually give you all these tool buttons. Um, so that's pretty handy. And what's even more nice, in my opinion, is if you were to click on this box, it makes them all disappear. So you can toggle them off, which is great. Now at the very bottom here, we have the status bar. There's nothing here, but if I hover over something, it'll kind of give you tips sometimes, which is pretty nice. Um, so right next to that little box is where you'll see it'll say auto scroll to source right now. Um, so in that, that is the essential framework to Android Studio. And the next thing I wanted to go over is a few settings with you. Nearing the top, you'll see that we have a little wrench here with uh, what looks like to be a little gear. Go ahead and click on that and that opens up the settings menu. If you click the little right arrow, it changes it into a, a down arrow for appearance and behavior. And we can click on appearance. Um, earlier we chose a theme, I chose IntelliJ. Um, if you wanted to test out Darkula or Windows themes, uh, feel free to do so. What's more important than that in the settings is the key map. Now this is great. Um, there is a way to you know print this out. Actually they have a little help website where you can print these out. But we know we can do control S to save. Um, and these are kind of all those little um, key map shortcuts for you. So make sure you look through there um, after you get going for a little while. Um, I'm not going to use any of these in my video tutorials just because I want you guys to be able to follow along a lot better. Um, but however, if you're going to be using Android Studio quite a bit, um, you're definitely going to want to look through them and at least find a few essential ones that you can use. Um, just kind of help you out, make your work a little bit uh, quicker. Now plugins. Everyone loves plugins. You can go to browse repositories and if you want to download some new plugins, um, you can actually search for them. There's a ton of them in here. There's a ton of them in here. Let's go ahead and close this out. And go ahead and close this out too. The next thing I wanted to show you is right here, the project structure. Now this is really nice. Um, if for some reason um, your JDK is not linking, um, here's the path that it's going to show you. This is the one, this is the variable we set up earlier. So that's really nice to be able to see it and know where it is. And that's in project structure. So let's go ahead and close out of that too. The last thing I wanted to show you before we go and create a new virtual device is this little question mark right here. If you click on that, it'll open up a website. And this is actually one of the best references I've ever seen. Um, a lot of developers don't spend much time on these manuals, but um, however, if you go, you can find just about anything that you really need to get started here. Um, if you look through, you can actually find the key map and it's printable from here. Uh, whereas you can't print it from the other screen, so, you know, look through, go ahead and find that. Um, you know, just maybe take a look through the quick start and see what they say. But for now, let's close this out, and let's make a new virtual device. 
So you might be asking yourself, why is he creating a new virtual device for us when we already have one that works? Well, if you go ahead and hit run, let's, okay, let's hit okay. And now when our virtual device appears, you can see that it's a little bit too large. Uh, so this is kind of annoying. We can't move it. We can't close it out. The only thing we can do is go to the bottom taskbar, uh, right click on it and close the window. And a lot of times this will throw an error, which it doesn't harm anything, but still it's kind of annoying. So if we go over here to our AVD manager, we're going to see Nexus 5. And what is this running at? It's got 1080 width by 920. Um, so let's close this out for a second. And now if we go to our desktop and click on our resolution, we can see that I have exactly that. My width, though, is 1920 and my height is 1080. So I have a 1080 um, for my height. And they have in the virtual device 1920 for the height. So therein lies our problem. So let's go fix that real quick. Let's go back to Android Studio, back to our AVD manager, and let's create a virtual device. Now we want something that's a little bit smaller than my screen. Now it really depends on what you guys are using here. My screen's pretty big, um, but I usually typically go with the Nexus 4. Uh, it works for me. Yeah, maybe uh, the height is a little bit larger, but that doesn't quite matter. I'll show you why here in a second. And don't click next yet. You want to hit clone device because you don't want to edit the original one. Um, I'm just going to put smaller. Okay, and that's all we really need to do. Um, let's see. Let me make sure. Yep, that's all we really need to do for now. Go ahead and click OK. Now we can edit the device by clicking next. And let's see, what do we want? Um, I've got Lollipop on my phone right now. And usually you want to go with the thing that says Google API because everything else is open source. Um, I don't really like going with anything that's open source. So I'm going to go with the newest one at this time, which is API level 22. And it's uh, by Google, so perfect for me. So I know it's going to work. Now here's what kind of a big deal is, um, the scale. Instead of going to auto, go to 4 dp on device, which is one pixel on screen. Um, so even though this is a little bit larger than the height of my screen, it's not going to really matter because I'm dividing that by 4. So this, the phone's actually going to appear a little bit smaller. So let's go ahead and click finish. Okay, so here's our Nexus 4 that just popped up, and uh, it's using the same API as the Nexus 5, so no no big deal there. Let's go ahead and run this. Now keep in mind, once again, that this might take a little bit longer to start up on your machine. Um, I've run this actually before, so it was actually already saved. So now we've got a smaller phone. So now we have the ability to move it. We have the X, you know, we can close it out if we want to. Still going to give us, you know, an error if we, you know, try to stop it while it's trying to boot up there, but whatever. All right, so we took a look at the structure here, and we were able to mess with the settings just a little bit. We looked at the help website, and we created a new virtual device. Uh, this time it's a little bit smaller, so we can actually use it. All right, well, that's going to summarize this tutorial, but in our next tutorial... We're going to actually start some programming, uh, create an actual application, and uh, we'll go from there.